Hello, hello, and welcome back. Um, gonna have a quick video here, or at least I'm gonna try. I always say I'm gonna have a quick video and it ends up being 15 minutes long, but I'm gonna try here because I'm late for my stream. Uh, bringing you some turbo games that I actually managed to record last night, so these are current ones. And I've got two games for you this time, um, mainly because there's not too much that I need to go in depth with with Turbo. It's kind of just how you want to be playing it and how you're going about setting up your kills and the, the limited CC that you have and how you have to use it. And kind of, I'm going to go through uh, what is the style of play for Turbo and kind of what I'm trying to do in each scenario <clears throat> to counter the other team and also make us win. Now, here we're playing against Vanguards, <clears throat> which is Rep Paladin and the DK. Now, uh, going against this team, see this is going to be uh, one way that we have to, this is one version of a team which kind of has a different um, play style in Turbo. There's like the the caster team where it's either double caster or one caster and one melee and you're not going to be hitting shockwaves that often so you want to be playing Stormbolt and then there's the melee cleave teams or teams where you're going to be wanting to playing shockwave because you're going to be hitting triples and things like that and getting AOE CC out. This is the AOE CC version, so we'll be running Stormbolt and we're playing against a Rat Paladin, so we're playing Disarm and Duel, but you'll be playing Disarm and Duel against most melee classes unless it's kind of pointless to do so. And that's against, like, say, Ferals and Windwalkers and stuff like that. So, uh, <clears throat> sorry. We'll be going in there, and what we're trying to, what we're going to do is we're trying to limit the DK's, uh, the Rhett's damage as much as we possibly can, and go on him because uh, Rhett's really strong at the moment, and they will train over over you, and they've got really bad cleave, and we can't really split against this team. So I'm looking I'm looking out for wings, I'm looking out for other big cooldowns to disarm and also duel him. I don't want to be doing them both at the same time because it's a waste. I want to do one and then the next if I if I need to if my shaman's starting to drop low. And I can also use my Disarm as a means of stopping him from being able to heal himself with uh, Just Cause Vengeance or um, uh, in, in other ways like that. And also I can do it to the, the DK if I was on him to stop him from Death Striking and stuff, etc. So here, um, and also <clears throat> as a precursor to it, in this scenario, because I'm not running Stormbolt, I won't be Stormbolting the healer at all. And I won't be stumbling a kill target. I'm going to be Shockwaving. Um, to relieve pressure and also stop the 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 ret from blessing of uh, sanctification for the stun that my misweaver is going to go for on their misweaver. So I'm getting that that out, and I also have my fear, which is where I want to be like leading. Uh, our big CC chain is boom. Uh, I jump over fear the monk, and then I charge back shockwave. So the Rhett's all locked up and everything, and then the monk, go, our monk goes over to the other monk, saps, into leg sweep. That's our, that's our full CC chain. So it's going to be a DR sap into full leg sweep. Now that's not a very long CC chain, but the damage from turbo is where it really excels. Um, with, um, with Lust and all the warrior cooldowns, then Enhancement Shamans do a hell of a lot of damage. So that's where turbo really excels, and that's why it's quite a good comp for beginners to play because there's not too much you have to set up it's not too fiddly it's like okay let's sync up our damage and try and sync up a little bit of cc and you start really seeing kills all right so let's get into this game now so here when i'm playing against turbo i'd like to uh playing as turbo i kind of like to push out i don't like to hide behind things because i like to be able to get a good fear opener if i can and also it kind of stops them from being able to push and harass our monk now I open up with a really terrible shockwave that doesn't hit a triple because I was being lazy and I thought, oh, I'll just hit it because it's unholy DK and we're going to get it. But here we pop all of our damage and it's such an immense amount of damage that comes out. But uh, And we're running Counter-Strike Totem to counteract the the burst from the Red Paladin. So when he pops his wings, I pop Duel, pop all of our cooldowns, get Lust, Blade Storm, we get Bubble. It's Excellent. Getting bubble on the opener is really, really strong. And now we're just trying to limitate damage, swap onto the DK, and control as much as we possibly can. We can see our um, monk going in for a sap leg sweep combo here. Um, just to create some more added pressure. It's probably not the best time to do it, but um, because we won't be directly pressuring the rep, but we're going to get some cooldowns out of the DK as well. Now, so there's a lot of damage coming out here, and I'd go for the disarm just to reduce damage further so our shaman does not die here. We see the monk 
st- re- their monks repositioning to try and maybe get C- to get CC on our healer, but he only gets the sap, so he's not going to be able to get the sap leg sweep, uh, the sap leg sweep. And there we get the 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 four man the four man uh, shockwave. Well, you only really need a triple, but it's a four man in this one, which resets the cooldown down to twenty seconds, which is really really positive for these melee uh, these melee cleave games because it's three seconds where my shaman can get back up and um, really like it's a huge difference because um, the more of these you land, you're actually going to be say because it reduces the cooldown by about ten seconds, and if you're only hitting um, you can hit three in the time it takes you to hit two um, a shockwaves if you're like hitting the reset. So you have 20, 20, 20, or 30, 30. So if you think of it that way, you're going to get, you're going to end up, if it's a long game, you end up getting way more shockwaves and they end up sitting 20 plus seconds of stuns or you end up getting trinkets. It's really important to do that and make sure that you're, you're hitting them. Now we know that we don't have we have damage in I think about 15 seconds again, and we're kind of just controlling the game here, trying to reduce the the ret's damage and also put as much pressure on as we can. I'm waiting for the shockwave to come back up, and we're also looking to get any CC that we can for the next go onto their mistweaver. So we get the sap, as you can see on the gladius into the leg sweep, and this is where the pressure starts coming out. We get the shockwave on, and we get monk bubble and bop. So, as you can see, we're slowly really getting through all of their cooldowns. That's only two goes that we've had, and uh, we pretty much have everything out of them. So it's going to be, sometime soon, we're going we're gonna to get them. Because um, most of their cooldowns are out, and it's going to be a long time before Wings comes back up. And we should be able to kill before that. And now we're just doing the same thing. Staying on the rep, because we don't want to go on the DK here, because there's no point. Because this rep has nothing, and he's in panic stations big time. We, and uh, we've got the shockwave coming up again. We're going to have Army of the Dead coming out. And we're just going, again, we're just limiting damage, making sure that my, my teammate doesn't die. Shaman starts dropping low, so we drop the bubble onto him. And that's all our only really big things there. Wings comes out again. Go for the shockwave on top of it. And then, uh, actually, yeah, he didn't wings, my bad. He, um, um, right, when cooldown's coming out, just shockwave on top of it. And we get the trinket out of the, the monk there his adaptation with the sap leg sweep and I my fear is just coming up I was tempted to fear him but I didn't um, but now I know that he has no adaptation for a minute my fear is up and the DR off the saps coming off in five seconds their monk is also getting really low with mana and we have we've just lusted and got the avatar and everything pressures on winds coming out he's cutting during his uh, um, offensive CDs which he doesn't want to do and we have I've got just use my dual and I've got a disarm coming out if I want to use it. Now here I'm still thinking about okay I need to be getting this stun on when I can but we also want to make it create a nice bit of pressure. Now see here I see okay I've noticed that the the monk's low in mana. I know that he doesn't have his adaptation and I know that my fear is up. I see him trying to go for a drink so I'm like I'm going to fear him big time. So I go for the stun I leap over, do the fear, and that. <clears throat> and the monk sees me go for that, sees him sit the full fear because his adaptation's down. Goes for the sap after. I get back onto this uh, into the ret here, and we start tipping loads of damage in it. It's outside of cooldowns, but our CC chain and our pressure, and the fact that they have no healing cooldowns and no defensive cooldowns means that he's going to flop. And uh, we we manage to secure the kill here even before we need to do the leg sweep. Now, okay, so there, what we're, to go back and kind of recap, what, what we were doing was peeling ret damage because it's really strong, using our, our, our jewels and our disarms, crucially to do that, or our shaman may have flopped. We're shockwaving whenever we could, trying to make it so it was uh, resetting the cooldowns and using it to kind of peel all the offensive cooldowns. We were syncing up our burst with our shaman. This communication is really key. And letting him know when's your lust up, when you've got this, does he get procs? And making sure that after, as we shockwave, then we put the put the sharpened blade on it. And we only be using the sharpened blade in points where we're creating a whole load of pressure. And then to the side, we just have the CC that we're looking for. So we have uh, our, our, we leap over, we fear, we get the sap, we get the leg sweep. 
And if you wanted to, and your shaman was uh, wanted to do it, or was in a good position, or say he'd been kited a little bit, he can try and get a hex. And it's not that crucial because it's a lot of wasted time casting the hex, and it can be kicked, and uh, you're just not doing damage at the time. But if you get the kicks and people are riding a healer, then it's really good. But in that scenario, it wasn't happening. Okay, so here we have um, Shadow Priest, Balance, Holy Paladin. Here is not a game where you're going to be playing Shockwave because you're never really going to hit this triple, the triple Shockwave. And as you can see, um, well, actually, it's a little bit blocked. Um, I shall move it here. See, just a little bit under there. We, we're playing the disarm right there. <laughs> now, I played disarm here because for um, the majority of the time, you'll, you'll see paladins playing melee wings. And what you can do is when they are playing melee wings is you can disarm them during it and they won't be able to heal unless they're casting heals. What you can also do is if you're running duel, is you can duel him during the melee wings and go defensive stance. So he has to deal damage to you and you're reducing the damage that he deals to you, therefore reducing the healing output that they have. Now, those are huge counters that you can do during melee wings. In this scenario, he doesn't end up playing melee wings. So my disarm kind of seems a little bit useless. But I had to choose either to play the disarm or not play the disarm and I decided to play it. Because it would have been huge if not. And the other talents isn't that a massive deal if we're going up in the Shadow Priest. So what we'll be doing here in this scenario is um, if the monk can't get his CC, I'll be storm bolting the paladin on CD. If he's okay with getting across and getting his CC, I'm going to be storm bottling the Shadow Priest just to really just nail him into the thing. Uh, what A macro that I'm using here is a control modifier macro, focus macro. So if I just press Q, normally where my storm bolt's bound, it will just throw it at the target I'm looking at. If I press control Q and I have control bound to my mouse, it will throw it at my focus target. So the Paladin will never see me target him for the storm bolt and won't be able to like loss in and out and he'll, he won't know when it's coming unless I run towards him. So in this scenario, most of the time you're going to see me um, storming, uh, storm bolting the Shadow Priest because uh, I don't want to do it on the Paladin just randomly and then it's going to be a DR'd leg sweep from uh, from the Monk. And we're going the Shadow Priest here and as we said before, we're keeping the VTs off. That is a crucial thing, keeping VTs off, pressuring Shadow Priest, getting his dispersion and just keeping on that pressure and trying to get some CC and kicks onto the Druid on big full moons and stuff like that to try and reduce our damage. But if we ride the Shadow Priest and we do a really good job at limiting him, it's going to be difficult for him to get a lot of pressure on us. And he's also the, the weakest target for us to go because the we can have the the balance can kite us a lot, and uh, the balance can kite and he can go bear. Now see there, I see our monk going for the sap leg sweep combo. I was looking and shaping up to fear, but he said, I'm going in for the sap and the leg sweep. I decided not to fear and hold it because putting a DR on my fear, especially when it was just off a sap, um, when it's on one minute and 30 second cooldown, is really bad to do. Now we pop our lust and we get dispersion and bob, which is great. I'm, I swap immediately off to the Paladin to keep pressure on him, and uh, he pop, he ends up popping his wings here, I disarm him randomly, and it's like, okay, it doesn't mean anything, because it turns out, this is when I find out what he's playing. So we already have a bot, we have Dispersion, we have Pally Wings, and uh, we get a, a nice little stun there, and we keep the pressure on, making sure that we're kicking these VTs. We're taking quite a bit of damage because of the swap, because we couldn't... Uh, uh, control the Shadow Priest for too long, and also the Boom is going to be doing a lot of damage with his full moons and stuff like that, because we're not on him, not trying to control that. We're focusing on the Shadow Priest big time. Now, it ends up starting to be like a, like a damage battle, but that's okay if you're really confident with reducing the Shadow Priest damage, and also with the amount of cooldowns that we already have out of the Paladin and the Shadow Priest. And even here, we see that the rest of Druid is starting to off-heal. That's him stopping his damage. So we have Shaman's low, I'm at 50%, and with him off-healing, there's no more pressure going into us, which is going to allow us to get back into the game. So we get the second bop goes on. So both bops exhausted, wings down, and uh, Dispersion also gone. And then I get DR hodged because of uh, the priest is also playing 
uh, mind bomb. Now I'd swap back onto the Shadow Priest because the bop's been purged. This choice by the Paladin to play double bop, um, double sack, I'm pretty sure is the talent, is a really bad idea against an Enhancement Shaman because the bop is going to be purged really quickly. He probably should have played melee wings, but then again, it would have been really difficult for him to upkeep against the amount of damage that we have with melee wings, especially because I would have been able to disarm him. Keep pressure, and we have um, we have uh, the counter strike down to reduce damage when our shaman drops so low. But we have a lot of stack damage going out into the pally. I swap to him during it to create even more pressure, and we end up getting bubble. Now that's everything pretty much out of this paladin. The shaman doesn't have much. His dispersion is probably going to be coming up in it, coming up soon. You see the. Balance Druid's casting Cyclones to peel the damage off the pally. He's in full defense mode, so he's not being able to tip as much damage as he was into us. And we swap right back onto that Shadow Priest. I stun him to stop him from getting more VTs out. And we just keep grinding out this. keeping Trying to keep the VTs off as best we can. Kicking them, reflecting them, and throwing me. And we keep going. Actually, he's just not getting no healing from it. His, his tankiness is poor. And we kind of just go at it. And we know that. The, so Lust and Battlecry match up really similar cooldowns. Unless I'm playing um, Pain Train to give crit to the Shaman as a means of getting a bit more damage out. Because then it's a 45 seconds and I'm going to have to hold it a couple of seconds. Or use it to get to confirm a kill. But most of the time it's better to do it with Lust. Because that gives them a lot with the increased haze buff. And here I pop my avatar and my... My battle cry because they they come up together and start tipping some serious damage. And I know that this paladin has nothing to really put into this priest, so he's going to start taking so much damage. We have um, all, all the bashes and stuff coming off from the druid, getting all the stuns out, and we get dispersion again. Now now at this point he is in so much trouble, and the amount of pressure that we got out of there was because we have this sap leg sweep combo off by our druid. Oh no, I druid our monk, sorry. Because this paladin was playing so close to him. It's a really stupid mistake by him. Because he knows he doesn't have bubble. He doesn't have he <laughs> doesn't have trinket. He has nothing. So why would he play so close? He probably should have played in this room to the side. Trying to peek out. Or played across here. Instead of right next to our, our uh, monk. I get cycling there. Unfortunately I didn't reflect it. Or we would have killed just then probably. I get the sharpened blade out. Kick the VT. And execute. There was nothing left for the Paladin to do. Got through all of the cooldowns. It was delaying the inevitable. They're, they went into full peel mode. Tried their best to do it. They, they got close to getting us because we had to leave that balance druid out there. And it's going to be really scary at times. But um, you have to also watch. It's like You can use, say, if I have my fear and, I, and I, we're taking so much damage and I need to peel. I can use that fear to peel the balance druid. And uh, to peel the Shadow Priest off as well. And we kind of just let the monk pick us back up. So there we kind of see that other style of play. Where you're not going for these like big shock waves or anything like that. You just you can use your Stormbot to peel. You can use it to lock down your, your kill target. And it's uh, in this scenario it's really important for that monk to get that CC. With other healers in turbo. You can also get that CC with a Paladin Hodging. So a second Hodge, he could play Repent if he wanted to, but it's not great. So he'd be Hodging, so it wouldn't be as long of a, uh, a CC chain, but you could have go Fear into Hodge or Hodge into Fear, or Hodge into Hex. Those are uh, other ways that you can do it. You could go Stormbolt into Fear if you're playing with a Disc Priest. With, you could go um, Bash into Cyclones with, a, with an Ardruid. Um, you wouldn't really want to play with an, a... Uh, Arrest of Shaman, even though like they used to play it before because you could get double Wind Fury totems up from it, but the mobility kind of lacks. So um, I hope that was helpful. I said it was going to be a quick video, but it really wasn't because I went over two things. Um, if you like it, uh, give it a like. Um, if you want to see more, subscribe. I'm going to try and get out one at least every day, but um, forgive me if I miss one. Uh, follow me on Twitter um, and uh, come watch my live streams. They're going to be every night. Um, and you can ask me any questions in there. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, see you next time.
Hello there, and thanks for watching my video. Make sure to subscribe if you like what you see, and like if you liked it, dislike if you don't. Please comment to uh, let me know what you want to see in the future, and uh, make sure to uh, come tune in and watch me on Twitch. I'm live from 12 a.m. or 12 midnight uh, GMT for normally about six hours playing a whole bunch of games. Hopefully I'll see you there.